Ladies and gentlemen, we will be integrating this rational function here, and we will use the partial fraction method, of course. So let me do that right here for you guys. Here we have 8x squared minus 10x minus 3 over parentheses x minus 4 and then parentheses x squared plus 1. All right, we can break this down into two smaller fractions. The first one we have blank over x minus 1 on the bottom, right? And because this is just linear, so on the top, we just need a constant. And for the second one here, we will have the x squared plus 1, but this is a irreducible quadratic. That means the top is just going to be a linear, so bx plus c. The good news right here is that we can actually figure out the a with the Kafra method. So let's go ahead and do that. This has the denominator x minus 4. We come back to the original, cover up the same denominator. And in the meantime, we will have to ask ourselves, how we can make that equal to 0. x minus 4 to be 0, x has to be 4. So we put in 4 in here. Okay? And you remember to plug in 4 into the remaining x's. So when we do that, we will have 8 times 4 squared, and then minus 10 times 4, and then minus 3 all over 4 squared plus 1. On the top, if you work this out, you'll get 85. On the bottom, if you work out, you'll get 17. Divide, you'll get 5. I didn't do everything in my head right away. I did this beforehand, and i tell you guys what the answers are, all right? Okay, now, for the B and C, unfortunately, we will have to do the traditional way. So I'm just going to multiply everybody by the lowest common denominator, namely x minus 4, x squared plus 1 just the denominator. When we do this times that, we will get 8x squared minus 10x minus 3. And when we do this times that, remember the a is 5 already. And then you see this and that will cancel and we will have the x squared plus 1. And then this and that multiply, the x squared plus 1 will cancel and we'll just have the bx plus c. times x minus 4, right? And then the rest is just algebra. So let's focus on the right hand side. This right here gives us 5x squared plus 5. This right here gives us, let's see, we have bx squared. And then this times that is minus 4bx. And then this and that is plus cx. And lastly is minus 4c, right? Minus 4c for the last part. And uh, let's see if we can combine anything. Sure, this and that we can combine, factor the x squared, put that at the end of the parentheses, we get 5 plus b and uh, x squared. Then we see that the x term, we have this and that, they are the x terms. So I will just put down plus parentheses with a negative 4b plus c and then the x. And lastly, we have the 5 and uh, minus 4c, so plus 5 minus 4c, like that. Now, have a look. On the left-hand side, we have the 8x squared, right? We have the 8x squared. Perhaps I'll put this down in black so that I see it better. 8x squared. On the right-hand side, we have 5 plus b squared. So what does that mean? This implies we must have 5 plus b must be equal to 8. In another word, b has to be equal to 3. Cool. And then you can say the next is negative 10 has to be this, but you see it has two unknowns, and if you can plug in, but usually I'll try to avoid that because negative 3 is equal to 5 minus 4c. Perhaps this is, e this is better. Just in case, if I make a mistake for b, if I use that right here, I will also be making the mistake for C, right? Anyway, this and that, we will have 5 minus 4C equals negative 3. And move this here, you get negative 8, divide both sides by uh, negative 4, so C should be positive 2, right? So we are ready to go back and actually write down our integration. Right here, the first one is 5 over x minus 4. That's the fraction that we have to integrate. 5 over 
x minus 4. And then next, notice that we have two things on the top. We are just going to split the fraction. b is 3. So I'll put down 3x over that. So I will just say we add 3x over the denominator x squared plus 1. And then we have the c. c is 2. So I'll put down the 2 over that. So we just say plus 2 over x squared plus 1. And of course, let's have the dx. All right, we are ready to integrate. For the first one, 5 over a linear, we just get phi or an absolute value of the inside. And notice that this right here is just 1, so divided by 1 doesn't really matter. And next, you have the x on the top. This right here, you can do a use up on the side. I'm going to leave that to you. All in all though, we will end up with plus 3, but then you will get over 2 because the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So when you divide, you will have that 2 factor on the bottom, and the x will cancel each other. But anyway though, it will be 3 over 2, and then it's a natural log situation. And since x squared plus 1 is always positive, I'm just going to uh, write down a parenthesis for that. Lastly, for this one, 2 is just a constant times uh, 1 over x squared plus 1. Integrate that, we just have 2, and the result is the inverse tangent of x. Just like that. So on all, that's it.